So thank you very much for um, everyone for taking time out uh, to attend our quarter 2 FY, FY24 earning call. Uh, during the quarter, we continue to expand our franchise. We have opened 20 new banking outlets during quarter 2 FY24. Uh, we have acquired 2 lakh plus uh, new customers and continue to broad base our deposit profile. Our loan book has grown by 26% year on year and 3.5% quarter on quarter. If you see our loan book growth compo composition, our retail loan book excluding ODFD has grown by 14% quarter on quarter and 88% year on year in line with our expectation. <coughs> slower overall loan, loan book growth is primarily on account of lower growth in micro banking at 2.6% quarter on quarter and decline in OD and FD book from Rs. 394 crore as on June 23 to Rs. 140 crore as on September 23. A degrowth of ODFT book lowered quarter on quarter loan book growth by 1.8 percent. Adjusted decline in ODFT uh, book quarter on quarter growth would have been little over 5 percent. Even in micro banking business, while the growth has been relatively slower, slower in quarter 2 FY24, we continue to see healthy new customer acquisition. Number of MB customers have increased by 3 percent quarter on quarter to 27.2 lakh as on 30th September 23. And as and, uh, and a result, average ticket size for our JLG loans declined further to rupees 33,200 uh, yeah, against rupees 33,500 last quarter and rupees 34,700 at the end of March 23. We are seeing pickup in disbursement in micro banking business, wherein micro banking disbursement for the month of October 23 were about 30% higher than monthly run rate for quarter two FY24, which gives us confidence that MB book. Uh, MB loan book growth will also pick up in S2 uh, FY24 and we are maintaining our overall loan book growth guidance for FY24. Our individual loan um, product MBIL to existing matured JLG customers continues to see good traction with year on year, on year growth of F120, 140% with strong asset quality of 0.5% gross NPA. Uh, we continue to build digital experience for our microfinance customers through complete digital onboarding, e-sign, e-KYC, digital collections through customer-specific QR code, micro ATM, and other offerings. On our retail book, uh, on our retail loan book, excluding micro banking, as we highlighted during our last earnings call, efforts are on to build MSME lending, housing, and wheels book further in little more informal and underpenetrated segment. We have introduced micro lab product, and uh, over time expects. Uh, granularity and yield of these portfolio to, imp to improve. Uh, we'll also utilizing our micro banking branches to build these portfolio more granularly. On MSME lending, wherein we have around rupees 2000 crore uh, loan book and currently operating from around 80 locations, there is a significant headroom available to expand retail book uh, offering within our uh, existing franchise. Our core geography has significant potential for this product. Currently, 95% of our MSME loan book is secured loan. In the wholesale lending segment, we are focusing more on small ticket SME lending, average ticket size of less than 5 crore, wherein we become primarily sole lender to the customer, meeting working capital funding and securing our exposure through a hard collateral cover of over 100%. In all the cases, in case of NBFC, uh, in, in case of NBFC lending, we continue to operate primarily in entities rated in A or higher rating category by external rating agencies. Uh, there are no NPAs in our wholesale lending portfolio. On the liability side, we have focused on strengthening the deposits profile through uh, broad basing of our deposit profile, reduction in bulk deposits, and top 20 depositors concentration. We have also focused on prudent utilization of surplus liquidity and brought down surplus liquidity to close to rupees 1400 crore against more than 2000 crore in, in the previous quarter uh, and uh, previous quarter end. Our retail low term deposits have grown by 50.5% uh, year on year and bulk deposits have declined by 2.4% year on year. Total deposits grew by 19% year on year in our case. We continue to build our banking franchise and open 20 new branches in quarter 2 FY24. We have opened 133 uh, branches over last one year. Out of total 269 general banking branches, currently around 42% branches are in less than two years vintage. Uh, we believe we will gain significantly over time as these branches mature. In order to strengthen our reach among tech savvy depositors, we have done uh, fintech partnerships to acquire retail term deposits in August 23 which is showing good results. 
uh, with retail deposits through fintech channels at rupees 45 crore plus as on Ma as on September 23. We have also launched instant saving and cut deposit account opening through video KYC on our banks on our bank's website. We continue to build digital experience for customers through complete digital onboarding. More than 95 percent of our library customers are uh, were onboarded through digital onboarding in quarter two of FY24. We have also launched interoperable card, uh, cardless cash uh, cash withdrawal, wherein our customers can transact withdraw funds without card on ICCW uh, enabled ATMs. We are also live on Aadhaar enabled payment systems AEPS as an issuer as well as acquirer, wherein our customers can withdraw through AEPS as well as customers of other banks in rural and semi-urban locations can use our micro ATM network at MB branches for routine banking transactions. We maintain high uh, tight control on the net interest margins uh, through the re reduction in bulk deposits and predominantly prudently using liquidity buffers which along with repricing of loan portfolio helps bank to maintain NIMS at 9.2% in quarter 2 FY24 despite an increase in cost of fund in general. We maintain tight control on operating efficiency and kept cost income ratio under control. Overall, we are witnessing stable financial performance as reflected in ROA and ROE of 2.3% and 18.2% respectively and successfully uh, building on our st strategies of creating stronger franchise for our microfinance business as well as for MSME lending, housing loans and wheels lending. We continue to invest in our people, uh, presence, processes, products and technology. Overall, we expect loan book growth to remain broadly in the same range of previous year loan book growth of 31% uh, plus, deposit growth to follow trend in, in loan book growth. We expect ROA and ROE to be remain at 2% plus and 18, 18 to 20% on sustained basis. Uh, I will ask hand over our um, uh, hand over call to Sarju, uh, our CFO, for taking through financial performance of the quarter. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Govindji. Uh, completely on board, our experience of banking, including our edge on MFI, that we have gained over the years, coupled with our investment made in grow engine, like you just mentioned, rollout of 133 banking outlets, our headcounts and skills getting placed to fulfill our aspiration, and also importantly, our inclination to ride on superior technology, which is led by our transformation project team. It all occurs well with the projections that you just mentioned in terms of current financial year. Now, let me quickly talk about numbers related to financial results for the quarter and then September 2023, and let me start with our interest income. Bank's interest income was 442 crore for the current quarter and then September 2023. It grew by 17% YOY and 4.6% QOQ. Uh, operating income was at 547 crores, which grew by 21% YOY and 6.4% quarter on quarter. Pre-provision operating profit, and this is an important uh, parameter that we track, uh, was 238 crore for the current quarter, which grew by 15% YOY and 7.4% quarter on quarter. Our cost to income ratio was at 56.5% as in the quarter for the quarter Q2 FY24. Interestingly, we just mentioned that we have been investing in our growth of engine and the rollout of 133 branches or headcount increase all gets loaded at a lag and this quarter one and quarter three we have got this cost loaded in the expenses first which we are generating the return of operating profit by raise of 15% by a while. Uh, one more strategically as we have been speaking in the last uh, call uh, is about the floating provision. We continue to follow making additional floating provision and in this quarter we have made 14 crore of additional floating provision which was same as in the Q1. So we are having a 20, uh, 28 crores of floating provision in the half year results. The total floating provision balance as of the September year end uh, balance sheet figure is about 120 crore. Uh, our credit cost, just to you know, emphasize that it's reported at 2.3 percent, but uh, the floating provision weightage in this is about 40 basis points. So, excluding the floating provision, our credit cost is uh, 1.9 percent, below 2 percent. Coming to our profit numbers, our profit is 114 crores for the current quarter, which increased 30 percent YOY and 6.4 percent quarter on quarter. 
Uh, for the six months period for the half year ended FY24, we have reported a profit after tax of 222 crores, a growth of 25% YOY. Uh, all of that, you know, the business activity culminating to, to the return of uh, uh, ROA of 2.3% and ROE of 18.2% on the increased capital base because this 18.2 is post the equity infusion the funds that we raised very recently. Uh, in terms of the one key capital adequacy ratio that uh, you know the regulator and the fraternity democratic fixed its eye on, we are at a very comfortable capital adequacy of 24.8% as on September 23, providing adequate headroom for our follow-up growth plans. Uh, if you recollect, we were upgraded in our rating ratings uh, by ICRA from A positive to A plus stable. Uh, in this September, recently, we have care ratings upgraded our long-term debt paper from A to A plus stable, which uh, you know indicates uh, that they are endorsing the inherent capability of our business model, both in terms of income and returns and asset quality management. Now, before I, you know, hand over, uh, you know, to the investor fraternity of the curiosity that they may have some questions, just two points that I would like to reflect upon. One is resilience, another is consistency. If you look at the slide 29 of our investor presentation, we have given a return on equity average for beginning FY20 to half year FY24, about a five year period. And, and, and you would remember that FY21 and FY22 was uh, a difficult period in terms of business environment, and therefore out of five years, almost two and a half years were a very difficult business environment. In spite of that, with heavy weightage of difficulties in the ratio, you will see that the bank has generated 15.3% ROI. So the resilience of the business to where we hold uh, is established with virtue of this slide that we are showing in uh, slide number 29. I would also like to draw about my second point is consistency, and if you look at slide 27, we have given trajectory of recency in terms of last five quarter performance, and if you look at yield on advances, our, our middle point of yield on advances is 19%, which is continuing for last five quarters. Our mean midpoint is 9.4. We are around the same trajectory. Even recently with hardened interest rate or the mix of secured and unsecured hope changing, still we are at near to the midpoint of 9.4 in terms of our needs. Our ROA has been static at 2.3. Even our current quarter ROA is 2.3%, and our, our, our ROE at 20%, we are almost near to the same. So with incremental disbursement that we mentioned that we are bearing up with a higher ROI, we believe that the trajectory of consistency will be maintained. Uh, with uh, focus on productivity and yield, uh, I think that will be something that HY, uh, uh, second evenings of the current year, we will see a performance uh, 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 in, in terms of at least maintaining the trajectory. Uh, with this, I end my commentary. Uh, if if uh, Govindji, you have anything else to add? Well, I think we can uh, make the house open for question and answer, unless we have some additional point. Anyone of my colleagues? So, Ranish, we can open this for uh, question and answers now. Sure. Uh, thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <coughs> The first question is from the line of Gaurav Kochar from Mirai Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening team. Uh, congrats on the quarter. So a few questions are, um, one is on the AUM growth guidance uh, for FI24, if, if you can refresh that. And in terms of, uh, if I look at 1H24, has been relatively soft uh, in terms of growth. Uh, 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 so in the next half, what is the anticipation? And uh, in terms of, let's say, the months that has gone by, uh, October, do you see the disbursements on track for the, for the full year growth that we are envisaging? Yeah, uh, right, Gaurav. Uh, thanks for attending this call. So as far as growth plans are concerned, so as I mentioned uh, in uh, advances, we expect last year it was 31%, you know, and uh, it will be above that. It won't be lower than that. It should be uh, much better than that, in fact. 
and uh, we have seen the traction in, as I mentioned in case of other than microfinance you know we have seen a significant growth in H1 also and further you know the rate of growth and the per uh, percentage of growth will go up in case of H2. So overall uh, growth for this year uh, will be above 31% above for this year in terms of uh, overall um, AUM for the bank. And we have seen already tra good traction in the month of October. As I mentioned, uh, uh, one of the reasons why, we, uh, we, you know, uh, the H1 growth numbers are not looking, uh, you know, significantly higher uh, was lower disbursement in case of JLD in the initial phase. So we have seen at least in the month of October itself, the microfinance uh, disbursement are 30% higher than what we have done average for the quarter two. So that's a big indication from our side that, you know, uh, we'll see a good uh, significant growth and microfinance around 20 or percent growth for this year plus 20 or percent plus and overall 31 percent plus growth for the AUM, uh, you know, is, is minimum from our side. Sure, sure. That's, that's good to know, sir. Sir, uh, next question is, is on margin. So it's, uh, there are two questions here. The first is on the TD repricing bit. So last quarter our TD cost was 7.9. This quarter it has gone up to 8.2. Uh, what is our, let's say, marginal TD cost? Uh, is it similar to 8.2 that we've seen in this quarter, or you, uh, the marginal cost is still higher? <clears throat> so, Bharat, the highest rate we offer on the retail side is about 8.5%, and, and the marginal cost, which is basically, let's say, combined for retail and institutional, was less than 8.2% for the quarter as a whole. But still, what we believe that, you know, the market remains tight, liquidity condition remains tight, and hence, uh, the term deposit cost may inch up a little bit from what we saw in quarter two, which is, let's say, 8.2%. And to that extent, overall cost of fund may increase by about 20 basis points over the next two quarters. Okay. So, the pace of uh, the pace of increase will be moderate because last quarter... Yeah, yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Most of it, actually, as we said last time, uh, most of the repricing has happened by now, maybe about additional 20 basis points and next two quarters. Sure. Sure, sure, perfect. And on similar on the yield side, uh, if you talk about the microfinance book, which was yet to reprice, can you tell me what is the portfolio yield and microfinance, and what is the disbursement yield, the difference between the two? Yeah, so microfinance portfolio yield was close to 23% for uh, the quarter, and disbursement yield is about 25%. And uh, what we see basically as the full repricing happen, uh, probably uh, overall microfinance, it will go up at least by 80, 90 basis point. Uh, you know, from where we are currently, and on a balance sheet basis, yield should go up by about 50 basis point from where we are currently. Uh, see, another thing, what has happened is because uh, our, our book is also, let's say, a combination of microfinance and a secured lending, and what we have seen so far in H1, the share of secured loans have gone up by about 4%, and microfinance has come down because the growth for microfinance was also a little slower. As uh, Gobind sir had also highlighted, now we are seeing pickup in microfinance and uh, there should not be much, let's say, decline in terms of the ratio between microfinance and secured from here till March 31st. And to the extent, basically, both yield and margins are, uh, are, are going to be a little bit positively impacted. Understood. So here, let's say the repricing happens, you're seeing portfolio yield can go up in microfinance from 23 to 23.6. Uh, yeah, that's correct. You might see some mixed change uh, in favor of <coughs> which, could, which could offset some bit of yield. So net net 9.2 margin you can continue to maintain in the next two quarters. Yeah. Uh, in fact, our, our this thing is that most likely about 15 to 20 basis point improvement we will see over next two quarters. Okay. Okay. That's that's good to know. Uh, and and last la, uh, lastly on the asset quality front, uh, the slippage was 100 crore stable sequentially, but there was some inch up in the SMA book, uh, very marginal but uh, uh, slight inch up. So uh, how do you see the slippages and overall credit cost for FI, uh, for the for the second half of this year? Given that typically second half is is better for for banks in general. Yeah, so we uh, gonna we do expect that you know overall slippages for the year will come down uh, from this level. And for the year as a whole, we should we expect around 2%, which is currently around 2.3%. It will come to around 2%, you know, overall for this year uh, by uh, improvement in the in, in S2. So there are some, you know, increases obviously in, in, S, in quarter two, which is being which is visible. But overall, this number will come down to around 2% for the whole year as a whole. Sure, but the irregular monsoon uh, has had no impact or not much impact on the portfolio so so far in terms of collection. Yeah, for a very mild impact because, in fact, uh, some po some pockets had some challenge because of drought, 
So maybe Tirlo wants to speak a little bit on that part. But some pocket had little bit uh, impact on drought. In fact, there was uh, no flood this time. You know, flood impact, I'll say. There are floods in some of the other pockets which were not, I mean, our geography, I'm talking from microfinance and MSM in that angle, those are not impacted. But some pockets had, uh, as you mentioned, you know, drought situation or, uh, you know, less rainfall. Uh, we had some slippages in those cases, and that's, that, got, that gets normally, you know, normalized in next next two to uh, three months' time. And that's why we are saying that there are some slippages in quarter two, but quarter three should be much, much better because of now we are seeing things becoming normal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Kochar from Mirai Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the follow-up. Question. Uh, just uh, on the branches, uh, sir, if I look at the branches, uh, there are about 20 branches we have opened in this quarter. Uh, and if I look at the cost to assets, uh, it was broadly at 6.2, 6.3. Uh, so uh, in the second half, uh, do you see more branch openings uh, in this year? And maybe for FI25, you can guide the kind of branch opening we are, we are expecting. And at the same time, uh, uh, let's say if the growth is better in the second half, can we expect some bit of operating leverage kicking in and uh, cost to asset actually uh, improving to 6% or lower? Yeah, so Gaurav, as far as expansion is concerned, yes, uh, we opened 50 branches in this quarter two, and uh, we have very limited number of branches to be opened in quarter three and quarter four. Uh, our business plans are, you know, we are in the process of making expansion plans for next year, and we expect around 125 odd branches getting opened in next calendar year. So I mean, I'm using calendar year, maybe some branches might open in the month of February and, and March based on our assessment, but generally these branches will be opened in the, in, in the next half year. I'm saying April to uh, September, most of the branches. And the number will be in the range of 125. And from October till March, uh, the number will be around around 12 to 15 only. I don't have exact number right now, but it's, it's not more than 15 odd branches. We might have some of the verticals, you know, going to new places. For example, I mentioned MSMEs at 80 places. So they might, they will be going to more than 80 places where we already have a branch. But opening of new branches per se, it will be restricted within 15 branches for this S2 only. But next year, obviously, is around 125 odd branches, what we are contemplating. And yeah, in Gaurav on OPEX 2 SX and OPEX 2 AUM, which was for 6.2 and 8.4 for quarter 2, as you also said that, I mean, we, are, we, are, we are basically expecting pickup in business uh, more in H2 than what was the run rate in H1. So to that extent, we are uh, expecting about 10 to 20 basis point improvement in the cost ratio itself. Sure, sure. So in, uh, let's say, in, uh, if I look at the ROA tree uh, for, for the next two quarters, if you're building in maybe 10, 15 basis point margin improvement and maybe 10, 15 basis point coming from uh, OPEX. Can we expect a two and a half kind of ROA exit, uh, you know, by FI24 exit, fourth quarter of FI24? <laughs> See, Gaurav, uh, on ROA, I mean, while uh, what we had said with respect to NIM as well as OPEX to asset, I mean, uh, it is uh, visible, but it's still on ROA front, we would like to maintain uh, the guidance which we had given. Uh, otherwise, in terms of, I mean, now, honestly speaking on credit cost as well, we are seeing ideally there should be some moderation in the credit cost as well, which Gobind sir had highlighted in initial uh, remarks as well. So, all out, I mean, there should be some improvement, but from a guidance perspective, we would like to maintain our earlier guidance. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you so much and all the very best. Yeah, thanks, Gaurav. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Jayant Raghavan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, dear sirs, and thank you for giving me this chance. Uh, my question is regarding the staff cost. You know, uh, to get a sense of the uh, scale of the staff cost, I just did a quick comparison with another uh, microfinance, the microfinance player, the small finance bank called Ujjivan. So I just see a delta between the two, you know. 
so our staff cost seem to be like 3 or 4% more than theirs so uh, can you throw some light on this because this affects the margins as well is it that we operate at this scale or is it that we have hired in anticipation of a higher revenues and growth or is there a chance to bring it down or how does it work uh, so while uh, I mean the one difference obviously could be the way uh, staff cost let's say is kind of getting counted as well because a lot of time it may be outsourced staff which may not be let's say coming in the employee cost from my counting counting perspective. So that may be one reason. But if you see uh, from our perspective, I mean the way we see is basically uh, from let's say from a productivity perspective. Uh, uh, we, we find our numbers to be one of the best in terms of productivity in the microfinance business and uh, other businesses as we had highlighted last time as well, we are building these businesses, I mean MSME, HL, uh, wheels as well as the liability. So some investments are being done in these businesses and benefits obviously will come let's say as we see more improvement in productivity and so on over next one to two years. So, so so basically, I, I, from a cost perspective, we think our cost matrix is, is, is on a better side and we continuously monitor it. Okay, clear. And uh, the other income part, you know, is there any scope to, is it coming from the investments that you show in the balance sheet? The other income? No, other income actually, this is not on investment. So basically, largely our other income is one is the loan processing fee income which is very stable fee income and we amortize this uh, over the loan tenure. So to that extent there is more stability in that. Uh, then another stream which we have is the general banking and the transaction income which again is improving for us as they say the client activation and overall penetration account opening etc is happening. Uh, then the third largest stream for us is the PSLC income. I mean given the fact that we are uh, predominantly in microfinance, affordable housing and MSME lending which are all priority sector activities as well as the fact that we are in rural and semi-urban locations. So we have good surplus PSL portfolio which we keep monetizing. So that is another uh, stable source of income for us. And last one is the recovery from return of account. So we are we are seeing uh, basically let's say I'll say the, the consistent uh, recovery from return of accounts as well which have been written off in COVID or in general. So this is basically the large composition of other income as such there should not be much seasonality into it. Okay and the last question is I mean uh, if we look at the road ahead say three or five years from now uh, would we be able to better the ROE that we are doing so right now we have projected for around 18%. You know, so would we be able to cross beyond 20% or 22% in the in the coming years? So uh, thank you, sir, for this question. But our trajectory, we as you mentioned, is around 80 to 20%. And what we are confident is that we'll be able to retain and maintain this, in, in, irrespective of composition of our you know asset mix. We are going more secure now and more non microfinance also, and even on a larger balance sheet. So I think uh, we stick to our guidance of 18, 20 percent, you know, at least next three to four years uh, horizon. That is how we look at. Okay, clear, clear. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vijay Karpe from Sri Ram Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. So my first question is uh, on the collection efficiency. So. What would be our X bucket uh, collection efficiency and uh, what would be our credit guidance for uh, this year and for the next year? So collection efficiency is, is largely same as it was last time. So on, uh, let's say on a non-NPA book, uh, we are seeing a collection efficiency in microfinance at about 98.5%. And for NPA book, it is about 25 odd percent and the combination is close to 97 percent. And on credit cost, uh, we had said that including floating provision, we are expecting a credit cost of about 2 percent and we would like to have the same guidance for financial year 25 as well. While as we let increase more on the secure loan book side, ideally it should come down but we would still uh, keep a guidance of 2 percent on the credit cost side. In, this is including floating provision as we had said last time as well. Important, important. And uh, how has been the performance of a new uh, secured book? So, uh, new secured book, the way we look at, uh, let's say, the microfinance and non microfinance uh, two parts. So, if we look at NPA in microfinance book, uh, we have about three and a half percent uh, NPA. 
and if you look at non micro finance book overall our npa is about 1.2% Yeah. Yeah. And one more question. Uh, the last question from my side. Uh, is there any update on the reverse merger side? So reverse merger part, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, I'll, we uh, we have not done any uh, work on that part, and we still intend to you know uh, evaluate that. So our idea is that you know holding company and bank will. Uh, We'll get into and uh, get into the discussion and then uh, take a course for uh, for future. Uh, so it is still at the I'll use our evaluation stage. We have not taken any view or we have not taken any you know confirmed view on this part. And uh, we do expect that you know now I think both the both the uh, boards and both the uh, sides will have a discussion and take take a view and and take it forward from there. So maybe my, when we have next call, we should have a we should have a clarity. You know what are the what are the plans of bank and the holding company on, on that front. Okay, so during the next conference uh, call of uh, Q3, we should have some uh, decision, right, on the reverse merger? Yeah. Oh, thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashlesh Sonje from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Ashlesh, you are not audible. So please use the handset mode while you're speaking. Hey, hi. I hope you can hear me now. Uh, yes. Just one question around the individual loan book. Uh, growth in book has, in this book has picked up uh, quite robustly now. Uh, so a few questions there. What, firstly, what gives us comfort on the growth in this book? Um, and what kind of metrics do we have here in terms of eligibility criteria? Uh, what proportion of these customers would be open market customers? If you can just answer some of these questions, please. So I'll just hand over to Tulok, he's our head of micro banking. He will talk about this part. Only last question I want to just mention first that uh, currently we are only doing a mature JLG customers. I mean we are here to go for open market. Obviously, the, you know when at the right time we'll look at that market also. But, but currently we have a large you know set of our JLG customers who are mature customers with us. So currently we are focusing on our existing customers only. On the metrics part, Tulok will take it over. Uh, so uh, we have uh, this. Uh, uh, as sir has mentioned that uh, we provide uh, uh, this loan, uh, micro bank individual loan to uh, mature client only. And uh, uh, if they have uh, uh, this uh, repayment card of uh, uh, 18 months, at least 18 months, perfect repayment card, then only we provide them uh, this uh, micro bank individual loan. And uh, these loans are uh, 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 in the ticket size of 1 lakh to 2.5 lakh. Uh, with a uh, tenure of uh, around uh, 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 two years to four years. Uh, and uh, currently uh, 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 we have a separate uh, team uh, which is uh, separate than uh, this uh, uh, micro banking uh, JLG team. Uh, and uh, credit uh, part is done by the uh, mainstream uh, 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 team, team of the bank. So uh, this credit is done uh, independent of the business. Uh, so uh, uh, all the uh, this uh, matured clients uh, at one part, and uh, then uh, this credit is done by the uh, separate team, uh, credit team of the banks. Uh, so this uh, uh, portfolio is performing very good as of now, and uh, 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 there we have a repayment uh, rate of 99.5% uh, plus, and NPA is also on very very lower side. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, loan book uh, across uh, around 250 plus branches and we have plans to expand it further uh, to uh, other branches. We have just crossed uh, uh, this uh, 500 crore mark uh, on this uh, 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 micro individual loan. Uh, so, uh, and we have plans to uh, take it uh, forward and uh, uh, grow uh, more uh, fast uh, than, than our current history. Okay, just a couple of follow-ups on that one. Uh, what would be the eligibility criterion when it comes to delinquency of that customer during that uh, vintage period which he has with us? And secondly, um, yeah, if you can just respond to that one first, please. So, uh, in this, especially when we talk about individual loans, uh, as uh, Mr. Trilog has mentioned, uh, so these are all those clients which are mature clients and also they are having a better credit score. So we, uh, this is very different than uh, our microfinance. So uh, initially we were going as a project. Uh, then now uh, almost 250 branches are doing uh, successfully. 
and this actually also includes the entire credit part. So it means when I'm talking about uh, this individual loan, so it means it will always be like my clients who have not shown any kind of delinquency in the past. Then only they will be eligible for that. And if you see the overall volume also, so this number is very small. Actually, uh, it, it, is, it is a very successful project what we have seen. Our delinquency is less than 0.5 percent as on date. And uh, I think this is this was very encouraging, and we want to go a little. Uh, we want to focus more on that, and a lot of potential we are seeing it here. Uh, because of two reasons: one is control wise, it is having better control; credit quality wise, it is having better credit quality. And the most important part is uh, the past history. So, past only for the good past history we are seeing. Uh, the other question, what uh, I think previously uh, asked about this, whether we want to go for the open market. So I think that we have still not touched because we have seen that lot of potential here itself. So probably once once we are uh, through with this and uh, entire team is uh, well versed with uh, this uh, kind of loan, so definitely we may think of those lines also. Okay, uh, perfect, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Patak from GC Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir, and uh, congratulations on a good performance, uh, sir. I had a question on the deposit front. So uh, I believe uh, while the headline deposit number uh, shows a flattish growth on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, you guys have done relatively very well on the utilization of the deposits. As you can see from the uh, casa and the retail share going up from 62 to 66 uh, percent. Uh, would you have any uh, internal targets on where you want to take this retail deposit share to uh, by the end of the year and probably next year? Okay. Yeah. Thanks for this question. So uh, our you know internal targets are that uh, retail term deposit in Kasa should be at least seventy percent. Currently, it is around sixty-six percent or so. Uh, it should be it should be at least seventy percent for this year. And you know, on a medium term basis, obviously we want this to be around 80 percent, and 20 percent will be dependent upon the wholesale deposit. Uh, you uh, yourself mentioned that you know we have reduced our uh, wholesale term deposit in absolute number also. So that is the whole you know the composition of uh, I think book that is what we are focusing upon, and the use of liquidity. These two things are very important for us. But as I mentioned, it's 70 percent is what we are looking at at the end of March uh, 24 in terms of casa and retail term deposit put together. Sanjay, want to add something? Yeah, so if you see, uh, we also cut down our top 20 depositors from 28% of March 22 to 18% now on September. And this trend will now gradually come for going forward also we're looking at similar or lower numbers. And the focus is primarily on Casa and RDD, which is going to be our fuel for growth as we move along. Okay, uh, so, so on that, so if I were to just look at the uh, balance sheet numbers, uh, we are running almost 100% plus kind of a loan to deposit ratio. So, uh, given the fact that we are crossing 100% and we want to focus on the retail deposits, would you see, uh, 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 you know, the cost of fund going up? Uh, you know, you now going to offer more final rates on the uh, term deposits? So, you know, as we mentioned, we think that the rates, I mean, the cost of deposit part or the market rates have actually bottomed out. So uh, we may not see any major reduction in the cost of deposit, you know, immediately. Uh, for even either uh, we talk for Utkarsh or we talk of the industry in general. So same is here. As our cost of deposit, other than repricing cost, will not go up. Our uh, the benchmark rates will remain the same range, you know, at least for uh, next uh, three to four months time, whatever we can see. So we're not going to change our rate of interest uh, significantly from here, and the cost of pi uh, funds will remain almost the same, other than repricing as. Pulin mentioned that that may have an impact of around 2025 basis point uh, till March uh, because of the repricing of FD only, uh, but n uh, nothing beyond that. Okay, but on the balance sheet management, are you okay with 100% LD? I mean, I know you'll have benefit of these small borrowings from, say, SIDB and all those refinancing lines, but just on a pure loan to deposit, are you okay with running a balance sheet with 100% LD? So uh, our, you know, you can say expectation for, uh, or you can say guidance for this year is should be around, say, 97% or so when we close the year. 
uh, it will come down from here and it should be in that range. Actually, what has happened, we have consumed a lot of le excess liquidity that we are that we're having, uh, you know, um, during uh, even last financial year also. As I mentioned, it has it used to be more than 2,000 crore, and on a completely large, little larger balance sheet, now it has come down to almost 1,400 crore, in fact, and in fact, it is coming down further. So, uh, I mean, that's why we were, you know, you can say, not taking more deposits because we were having surplus liquidity. Having said so, now we are seeing a good growth in, in advances and for every advances, we require 125% advances as far as deposits are concerned. So, at the end of March 24th, it should be in the range of 97% or so. And that is what we, you can say, as a guidance we can tell today. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my questions and uh, congratulations on good numbers. So, sir, my question is again on uh, micro banking collection efficiency, which is 97% excluding arrears. So, sir, it seems to be slightly lower than peers. And if I recollect last quarter, we were expecting slight improvement, uh, you know, happening in that number. It's been flattish in this quarter. So the question is, uh, is there any regional color, uh, you know, in this? I mean, is there a couple of states which are driving the overall collection efficiency? Uh, so uh, basically, uh, this is uh, lower in some parts only. Uh, it is not lower in overall, like uh, if you see in uh, Uttar Pradesh. So we are not uh, working in entire Uttar Pradesh, in fact. If you uh, compare the collection efficiency of peers, uh, most of them are working in entire Uttar Pradesh. So uh, in this uh, eastern UP part, uh, uh, if you see this uh, uh, two, two, three districts uh, like uh, uh, Mirzapur, Sonbhadra and uh, then Sant Kabir Nagar and uh, uh, Faridabad district. So there we have uh, some uh, issues uh, and, and everyone is facing such issues like uh, this uh, uh, one uh, Kajya Mukti Abhiyan was there and then uh, some uh, issues related to drought also in uh, this Mirzapur and Sonbhadra belt because there is no uh, proper uh, 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 proper way of uh, this uh, 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 canals and all these things can yeah. not there. So irrigation, proper irrigation is not there in that belt. Uh, so there uh, some heat is there uh, on the agricultural side. And uh, uh, second part, uh, if you see uh, like Haryana, so Haryana also we are not working in the entire part of the Haryana. So we have uh, mostly branches in Ambala, uh, Kuruchet and Karnal belt. And there we have some issues. Uh, in that part. Again, in few parts of Uttarakhand, there was a flood, unfortunately, this year. Uh, flood not in uh, our court area of UP and Bihar, but there was some uh, flood impact in Uttarakhand. So there are few branches are impacted. And uh, uh, last, uh, this Nagpur well, we have some issues. Otherwise, uh, uh, if you see our entire, uh, like Rajasthan, our entire portfolio in Odisha, and then uh, 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 Bihar also, most of the part, it is now uh, improving. Uh, so overall, uh, uh, it is improving, and uh, uh, we expect uh, that uh, uh, it will come at the level of uh, like uh, uh, we were uh, uh, last year. Uh, it was 97.5, uh, 97.8. So we, uh, we will uh, we will be improving uh, from this year itself, uh, from this uh, month itself, and uh, uh, by the end of this financial year, we will be in the range of uh, 98.5 or something like that. Okay. And we have, we have, uh, we are developing the mechanism for also. It is already being uh, done. Uh, like we are putting more people in collections also, so that uh, uh, they have a, a very focused approach on uh, write up collection, NCA collection, and SMA one, SMA two uh, bucket of collection. So uh, that also we are doing on those uh, lines also. Mm -hmm. And, and just to add to what uh, the looks are at said, I mean wherever we are seeing, let's like, say. I mean, kind of a lower collection efficiency, specifically, let's say, straight or isolated places, we are reducing exposure as well, or let's say we are keeping our chance a little more conservative, so whether it is Haryana or Chhattisgarh or Delhi, wherever we saw lower collection efficiency, we have reduced our exposure as well, vis-a-vis -vis March. So that should also help eventually in terms of bringing things to the normal thing. Got it, got it. And uh, Trilok sir, uh, if you can highlight anything in Bihar uh, to be, uh, you know, flagged off, is, is Bihar performing as good as, as it was before? Because, uh, you know, the context is we have seen many players, you know, entering the state. Uh, the market is becoming more and more penetrated. Uh, have we seen any impact in terms of rejection, indebtedness, or even customer retention? 
So uh, we don't see any challenge still in terms of uh, customer retention and uh, rejection. Uh, of course, uh, uh, with uh, uh, these guidelines of RBI, uh, which was issued last year, so there are some impact on the rejection because now uh, uh, in last one year uh, people have given all the data and now bureau are uh, providing the full information. So due to that there are some uh, rejection, uh, but still in terms of potential and uh, uh, this uh, client availability, Bihar is still it's very very densely populated. And many uh, 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 many companies are coming there, many players are coming there, but they are basically in uh, uh, in uh, uh, urban area. You can say, or if they are going to uh, uh, a bit deeper, then they are going up to tahsil level, taluka level. And uh, but we are in the means uh, uh, we have branches at the block level, even beyond that we have the branches. So they are, uh, uh, we don't find any such challenge that uh, uh, client availability, uh, uh, regarding to client availability or uh, retention or rejection. So we don't find uh, many challenges like that in those areas. Got it. Got it. Got it. This last question is on, sir, new CV financing portfolio. So when I look at the portfolio profile, we do new CV financing, uh, the ticket size are 30, 35 lakh average and we fund the small fleet operators. Uh, and the pricing is about 11-12%. Uh, so, sir, what is the thought process? Because, I mean, the customer profile looks slightly risky, and the ticket sale is also large, and the pricing is slightly, uh, I would say, uh, slightly lower. I mean, do you think that the pricing uh, is, is fully capturing the risk here? Yeah? So, uh, uh, thanks, thanks, Nakla. So, as far as CBC is concerned or now, or MSME is concerned, we are like okay, in a, uh, catering right now to the bit sort of you know, quality people, like quality profile customers. So, uh, since it is this like okay, inception of portfolio building, we are very cautious about like okay, what kind of portfolio we are building. If like okay, we go little overboard, then in that situation, like okay, we might end up like okay, losing all the risk for the front. So we are a bit cautious on that, but at the same time, we are looking at the customer's expectations, aspirations, like, okay, and we want to leverage our distributions, like branches the, of NB and GB branches, and, and entering into the area of, like, for example, the used CV, or like, okay, micro lab. So in those areas where we will be able to get uh, a different, like, okay, the rate of interest, so that, like, okay, we will be able to cope up a bit sort of, like, a risk it comes like in the near future. But overall, we want to be cautious on that and I think the way we've been growing, the rate that we are having, I think trajectory is good and uh, that's like uh, just to add only one thing, uh, you know, what Unish just mentioned, but still we are seeing, uh, you know, you know, uptick in our uh, yield as far as wheels business is concerned. We do expect around 20-25 basis point increase in the overall yield, if you look at the overall portfolio of wheels, maybe in this six months time, from quarter two to quarter four, we'll see around 20-25 basis point up as far as the yield on wheels is concerned. So that is anyway happening in our case. Okay. Thank you so much and that's the plus. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nilesh Jetani from BOI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question was... Would you please be a little, a little bit louder? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, hi, good evening, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on the MFI book. Uh, this is a reference to the resp earlier response you gave to the participant on... MFI book to see decent disbursement going ahead and growth to come on that stage. So wanted to understand historically, say over the last two three years, has there been a case where MFI book trajectory has been slightly slower in first half and second half it typically picks up or utkars as such uh, because disbursement etc seems to be largely flat basis on a YOI basis. Uh, so, uh, if we see the history of our MFI book uh, in last 2-3 uh, years, or even uh, we can say last 10-12 uh, uh, years, uh, so uh, 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 normally it is uh, uh, low disbursement in uh, quarter 1 and quarter 2, and uh, it picks up uh, with uh, this festive season, like the Pauli, the Sahara, and all this festive season, it picks up, and then uh, uh, around 40% of the disbursement are made in uh, Q4. Uh, so it is it is the history and uh, 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 it, it is like that in last uh, uh, 10 12 years uh, uh, we are working since last 14 years so uh, mfi book history uh, their performance is like that only 
the only one thing I want to add what the Luke just mentioned. So normally historically uh, in quarter one, quarter two, it, it is little lower. It picks up in quarter three and actually peaks up in quarter four. That is one part. Second for microfinance because it, the average the tenure of loan will be around say 14, 15 months only. Average 15, 16 months. So it runs down very fast. So you know incremental. You know if I am able to do 30 percent disbursement, higher disbursement, that 30 percent state goes to portfolio build up. In fact, so that will that certainly you know helps us. So it's not that you know I'm talking of uh, say around 2,000 odd crore you know book building during next uh, uh, six months time. It's not that I'm we are trying to have 40 percent, 50 percent increase in disbursement. Even JLG, if I'm able to disperse around 20% higher, then we'll be able to uh, reach our number. That is second part. Third part is what has also happened besides the historically, you know, in quarter one and quarter two. This time we had done a lot of initiatives as far as JLG part is concerned, especially because of the tech angle and because we are largely in the hinterland, you know, our 75% plus portfolio in the rural and semi-urban area and where we have done things like EKYC and e-sign and, you know, a lot of tech enablement and we have 100% onboarding uh, which happens through uh, through, uh, through digital modes only, it has taken a little longer time because we have trained all these people. So sometimes uh, the, the 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 pace would have been slower in those cases. So that has also contributed a little bit. But now you know all these things are in place and we have worked a lot on this part. Uh, we expect that uh, quarter uh, quarter three and as I mentioned, that's why I mentioned that in December, October itself, uh, the disbursement under micro banking was 30 percent higher than previous month's uh, average in fact. So that we are already in track and these are going to help us in a big way in terms of overall efficiency in the operation and even in the effectiveness of operations. That is what we are looking at. Got it. That was helpful. Uh, second question was on the, uh, the cocktail of deposits today, what we have with increasing share of retail TD. So two pieces of questions over here. One. A lot of your peers are talking about raising institutional in the time being, considering they don't know what exactly the rate trajectory is going to be. Some are expecting here to plan. Can it be a little louder, please? Yeah. yeah. So, I mm-hmm. wanted to understand the thought process on raising retail TD and institutional, uh, because few of the peers are also highlighting that rates may settle or maybe slightly go down, so they want to raise deposits for the interim period or maybe when I see your numbers, the retail TD, which I believe would be two or three year book, uh, that share is growing at a slightly higher pace. So what thought process we carry? And in long run, this retail TD growth, what benefit we can have on the cost of funds? So the first benefit, I mean, the retail TD is, See, what we see is, is, is actually the sticky customer acquisition versus, let's say, institutional term deposit. So usually if you acquire a retail term deposit, there is a chance, 75% chance that the customer will roll over, right? So that is the first advantage why retail term deposit is preferred over institutional in our case. Also, the, uh, most of these customers also end up opening their car savings account with us. So that is the biggest advantage you get. Because they can get their interest credit to their account and hence it becomes a, rec- it's a running account. And with the additional cross sell of you know a UPI uh, handle or a bill pay, it becomes more sticky. So that is the reason why we are focusing aggressively on RTD. So, so even if RTD, let's say, is 10, 15 basis point expensive than institutional, RTD is a preferred. Preferred mode is more reliable, more long term. And, and and cross selling is also possible. Yeah. And what we are also doing, we are, we are more focusing more on more digital also in this case. Of course, it's just it's beginning only, but we are able to get around one and a half crore on daily basis on through digital FD also. Our expectation and where the operating cost will be much, much lower. I think we do expect that, you know, that uh, other, other costs will get uh, well neutralized in this case. But having said so, I think uh, we are not saying we will not take the wholesale term deposit. We keep wholesale term deposit as a, as a uh, I, the way, you know, accounts may, they say, balance this figure, in fact. Wherever we have shortfall, we might dip into that. But the in, in medium term, because we are a retail bank from the deposit side, so retail deposit, term deposit and CASA will be our focus area uh, for, you know, for, you can say, medium term and for long term also. Got it. So despite, say, 15, 20 basis points higher and retail TD growing at such strong pace, uh, our anticipation is cost of fund would largely increase by 20 basis point only going ahead. Yeah, because most of it is already priced in. I mean, as I said earlier, our term deposit cost is about 8.2 for this quarter, right? And the maximum rate we are offering on the retail side is 8.5, right? And obviously, deposits will come in all the buckets. So, to that extent, not expecting more than, let's say, 20, 25 basis point cost of fund increase. Got it. Got it. 
Uh, last question uh, was on the overall. Sir, sorry to interrupt, uh, uh, Mr. Nareesh Could you speak a little louder or closer to the headset? Yeah, am I audible now? Perfectly audible. Yes, please. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, the last question was on the mix where uh, the secured books or the retail piece is growing at a much faster pace. Uh, so, what outcome or what trajectory one is building as far as NIMS are concerned, say from a two to three year perspective? Uh, if retail TD, uh, sorry, if retail assets are supposed to grow at a much higher pace vis-à-vis -vis the group lending book. Should I repeat my question? Uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. So, I wanted to understand from a uh, loan book mix perspective, uh, the mix is largely moving towards retail loan, be it MSME, housing or CE, CV. So, I wanted to understand over the next two to three years where mix will largely divert towards uh, these loans. What is the NIM outcome uh, Utkars is looking at considering the yields in this are significantly lower versus what yields we are earning on the micro banking side? Uh, so, our sense is that we should be in the, the current range should be maintained in next two to three years horizon also. I mean, we are saying 9.2 percent upward should be possible in NIM. Uh, one is that we also get, you know, efficiency of operations. We mentioned we have opened a lot of branches during last two years. Those branches mature and uh, in fact, our, uh, UK, I mean, people are talking about staffing also. In fact, our staffing is enough for next 25, 30 percent growth. I don't require staffing for next 30 percent growth from here. So, our overall cost, you know, will, will come down from here. And uh, the important part is what we are also looking at some of the asset classes within retail. For example, we are talking micro lab where the yields are much, much better than uh, uh, for a normal MSME or normal lab. We expect 17, 18% type of yield in those cases. Similarly, we are also looking at, uh, you know, used vehicles, you know, where the yields are little better. Uh, similarly, we, have, we are hardly doing any unsecured lending under MSME segment. So, in the lower ticket segment, lower, lower means, you know, below 10 lakh segment, we are also looking at uh, unsecured uh, MSME portion where the yields will be better. So, there will be certain things where yields will be better and also as, uh, our uh, operation efficiency will take care. So, in though our, you know, mix of microfinance will come down from say 60 percent by another 7, 8 percent or maybe 9, 10 percent also next uh, 2 to 3 years time. But NIM part should be in the range uh, where we are today. We don't expect any decline in the NIM range which is around 2.9.2 uh, or so, uh, it will not come down from here, at least in the next two to three years' time. Actually, one more thing I want to add, what is going to happen, at least over next one year, we are going to get the benefit of repricing of microfinance loan book, which we had said. So, maybe next one year, at least, uh, you know, this only will help us in terms of improving yield and maintaining net interest margin and, let's say, improving net interest margin from where we are currently even if the cost of fund is increasing and after that obviously there should be some advantage in terms of the CASA also building up further from where it is. So to that extent, uh, net net we expect NIMS to be uh, in the same range. Also to add that our micro banking vertical as we all is a great contributor to the you know PBT line. So with this growth, uh, our all KPIs will be supplemented uh, much higher than what we are saying given the fact that uh, it's a mass, good mass of business likely to Convert in the next half. Got it, got it. That was helpful and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all the participants you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Jayant Raghavan, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello once again. Uh, uh, just a couple of questions. Now that we are into the election season, usually it is found that, you know, politicians come and they make these loan waiver announcements that impact the microfinance industry negative. Do you think that this is going to be any kind of a challenge for us? Uh, thanks for this question, sir. So, we don't expect any challenge. Uh, there are two main reasons for that. One, you know, you, you must have seen even the government is promoting microfinance in a big way now. And wherever our Prime Minister and Finance Minister talk about, they, I think they talk about microfinance, mudra loans, jails in a big way. So, there is big support, uh, you know, from, uh, the, uh, from, the, from the political class now. And we have seen in especially our core geography, 
in places like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar also. And there is big support for this movement because they know, you know, uh, this is L L actually, you know, supporting the people for through self-employment. So it is big, uh, you know, plus for their plus uh, from from their side. Second, we have also seen, as the Trilog mentioned, we are doing microfinance for the last 14 years, and and our hardcore, you know, big geography for us has been UP and Bihar, and we have never seen any impact uh, because of because of you know political uh, issues or because of elections. In fact, there might be some logistic issue at the time because they will not allow to carry cash. Those type of things are separate. But from the overall, you know, working of Macarnas angle, I think that there has not been a challenge in past at all. So we don't foresee any issue as far as microfinance, uh, so the, uh, the uh, general elections in uh, April or May 24 are concerned on microfinance uh, activities. Okay, that is good to know. And uh, the book value currently is 24.5, if I remember correctly. So by March, uh, where do you see us uh, in terms of book value per share? So, sir, what, what we have uh, basically guided is about 18-20% uh, ROE, right? So, to that extent, uh, I mean, obviously about, let's say, 9-10% taxation to current book value from now till March should happen. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.